View models are a key concept, not just in Swift UI, but across many frameworks. Their job is to handle data, while the UI focuses on managing the interface. Separating these responsibilities is a common practice and an essential skill for any developer. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to build a view model. The first step, of course, is to create a new file. Make sure to select the Blossom Movie folder, press Command N, Swift File, Next, View Model, Create, hit Enter for space. It's important that our view model instantly updates the UI whenever the data changes. Therefore, we need to include the at observable macro. At observable allows this view model to automatically notify the UI of any data changes. We typically can't use a struct with at observable because structs are value types. This means a new copy is created whenever they change. Instead, we can define our view model as a class. Now it can share and modify data without creating new copies. Inside our view model class, we'll define an enum to represent the different stages of the fetching process. Enum, fetch status with braces, case not started, case fetching, case success, case failed, parentheses underlying error, colon error. Before making a request, we start with case not started, where the UI remains empty. Once fetching begins, the state switches to fetching, displaying a progress view. If fetching succeeds, we show the normal UI. However, if an error occurs, we'll display a view with the error message. With our enum created, we can now use it in the view model. Down arrow after the enum closing brace and hit enter. Private, parenthesis set, parenthesis bar, home status, colon fetch status equals dot not started. Private set ensures that only the view model can update home status. Other parts of the app can only read its value. This is important because only view model will know the value for home status based on the response. We initialize it with dot not started because no request has been made yet. The next step is to define our data fetcher. Before that, we need to navigate back to the data fetcher file and convert it into a struct. At the top after import foundation, hit enter, struct, data fetcher, open brace, scroll to the bottom, and add a closing curly brace to complete the struct. This was something I forgot to do in the earlier video, and I apologize for that. The good news, you get to see how we fix mistakes in real time. With data fetcher fixed, we can return to our view model file, press enter for a new line, private, let data fetcher equals data fetcher. A quick note, private isn't required here, but since no other file needs access to data fetcher, it's good practice to include it. That way, when we call structs in other files, we're only presented with relevant options. Next, we'll create an array to store trending movie titles. New line, bar, trending movies, colon, bracket, title, bracket, equals, brackets. The trending movies array will hold a list of title structs. We initialize it as empty to ensure our app doesn't break if no data is returned. With the property set for now, we can move on to creating our functions. Make some space and add func, get titles, parentheses, async with braces. Async is used because this function will make a network call. This allows it to run on a separate thread, preventing it from blocking the main UI. At the start of the get titles function, we could type home status equals dot fetching. When this function is first called, it will allow us to display a progress view to show loading. Next, we can add a do 
catch block since the function we're about to call can throw errors. Inside do trending movies equals try awaits data fetcher dot fetch titles for movie. Remember, data fetcher that fetch titles returns an array of decoded title structs. We pass the string argument movie to build a URL for training movies. This is useful because in the future, we'll need to fetch training TV shows the same way. If this completed successfully, we can say home status equals dot success. This tells our UI to show the home view. We just need to handle any errors. I'll scroll down first and add print error. This prints the error to the log for debugging. Now we set home status to dot failed, passing error as underlying error. This gives us an error message that we can have the UI show. This is a simple view model, but we cover the core concepts of how it works. We just have a few more steps before we can see it in action, but we're almost there. Thank you very much for spending some time with me today. I can't wait to see you in the next one.